So when I was doing my food plots, it was 8 p.m. and I was finishing them by headlight. And when I was towing the cul packer, that red light came on. It's an oil-cooled engine. We have an oil cooler right here where engine oil goes through that cooler and keeps the engine cool. And then behind that, and I don't know if you can see it, but back behind that, there's a fan. Or when the oil reaches a certain temperature, that oil temperature switch sends a signal to turn that light on. But also when the oil temperature gets high, it should trigger that fan on. And that happens all the time. When you're at idle, sitting still, um, it'll bring air across your legs as it's bringing it through that radiator to cool the engine. But this is the first time that the oil uh, temperature light came on, but not the fan. My air filter is completely disintegrated. It's just that foam rubber and it's just over time is disintegrated. So I got a new air filter. I got a new oil pressure switch and I went ahead and bought a new carburetor because I think the carburetor is leaking gas past the float valve and I didn't want to mess with changing the float valve and then or getting the wrong part. I mean, it's a 13, 14 year old quad. Let me show you the parts I got. I have a genuine Suzuki air filter, the oil temperature sensing unit. I'm pretty sure this is bad. That's $80 for that. So I hope I guessed right on that. And then here is the carburetor that you think was made of gold considering how much it cost. So the first thing I have to do is take off this cowling. And so it's got these little cam lock things here, which are easy to take out. But I have actually put stainless steel screws in my cowlings. And then during Hurricane Michael, we used this to move some trees, and my neighbors actually broke this. So I think I can get this new cowling. So while that's off, I'm just going to leave that off. But back behind that rubber there is where the oil switch is, and the carburetor is up under here. So I'm going to start taking cowlings apart. So just to show you why I needed a new air filter, look at that. It's just completely rotten and expose my fuel tank. I think the easiest way to get to the carb would be to take the fuel tank off completely, but I'm gonna try and just see if I can lift it a little. And one problem you get with older machines is that the carburetor float will stick open and let fuel just keep running from the fuel tank into the carburetor. And in this case, that's the air intake into the carburetor. There's a screen right there. And that new filter goes in that area. But I see and smell fuel right there. There's a little puddle of fuel right by that screen. That's telling me that float is probably not working properly. Right there is the fuel filter. I mean, the engine oil filter. And behind it, back there, is that oil pressure switch. I'm gonna have to drain the oil I just put in this the other day because I think if I take out that oil pressure switch, oil will just drain out of that hole. Right now I'm gonna see if I can lift this fuel tank up. But yeah, that fuel tank just kinda lays in there, I think. Yep. I feared I'd have to do this. I just changed the oil in this machine. And I put Mobile One in it, and for those of you that change your own oil, you know Mobile One is expensive. $10 a quart, so I got $40 worth of oil I just put in this quad. But I gotta drain this because I gotta take off the oil filter. Again, that's new as well. For 400cc bike, it actually takes quite a bit of oil because it uses oil to cool itself. All right, that part's done. I gotta take the oil filter off next. All right, got the filter off and out of the way. Well, that had to happen because you see those wires right there? One of those wires goes to the oil temperature switch. Okay, I got the electrical plug off of the oil temp switch. See, it's a two-prong plug. Here's the new one, and you can see the little latch right there, and then the keyway to line it up. Now, I took this and compared it to my wrench sizes, and 15 sixteenths, despite the rest of the bike being metric, 15 sixteenths should take out the old plug. And like I said, the old plug should sit right in oil. We'll see. The oil filter screws on right there. That colored wire goes to the fan switch. When that sensor reaches a certain temperature, it turns on the fan. And you can see the fan is right there. And then you have the item I'm replacing, which is the oil temperature switch. 
that turns on the red light in the dash. So that's what all this trouble is about. All right, so the old carburetor is out, and here is the new one. This is the throttle cable, and that goes inside that black area there. So that's not too hard. What was difficult was this is the choke cable. You can see there's a choke needle there, and that stayed with the bike. Pulled out of that hole right there. So looking at the new carburetor, this plug and this spring was inside. You can see I've already pulled the choke needle out. So I got to transfer this choke needle to that right there with that spring and not lose anything. So uh, yeah, wish me luck. Okay, I got the new spring on and the new choke needle. So the carburetor needle goes in there and then I gotta screw in the black rubber piece that's around it. So that's not gonna be simple. The idle adjustment cable goes under the carburetor. Throttle cable linkage is right here. That's fairly simple. Go to the other side and try that choke cable. I really didn't want to do it, but I took the air box out and the rubber line that goes to the back of the carburetor that goes to the air box. You can see removing that air box, which used to go right here, gives me a ton more room to work from the back and more room from the side. And I didn't want to remove it because there's a bolt that goes in in this area. It goes right here, actually behind there, and it's going to be so hard to put back in. But I couldn't get this choke cable into the carburetor at the right angle, so I didn't want to mess this up. So I took the air box off. It'll give me a chance to clean it and clean out the drain as well. All right, the choke cable is on right there. And I had to bring the carburetor all the way through the bike because there's no way I could put it on at any other angle. So now I'm going to try and get the carburetor throat into that hole back there, which is into the engine intake. So I got the new idle adjustment, which is right there. Then this is my throttle cable. And this actuator of the throttle is different from the carburetor I took off. So that made the cable too long. So I got the cable at max adjustment right here, which means I've got this uh, aluminum part pushed as far away from here as possible. Then I came up top here and pulled this off the throttle, and I got that max adjusted. There might be a little bit of adjustment left, but now when I push the thumb throttle, it should go all the way full throttle now. So you got that full throttle, and then the idle is the stop on the bottom, which is the spring and that little rod that comes up and hits that stop right there. So she's full travel. That's wide open and idle, wide open and idle. So I gotta put that cover back on. I gotta hook up the fuel line. I've already got the fuel drain line. It comes off the carburetor, hooked up. I don't have much left to do. All right, an update on where I'm at. I got the air box back in and the screw that comes in from the back there was ridiculous. I got both of those nuts in. I got the new filter on, that's all cleaned up. I gotta tighten that clamp right there. I gotta put on the air box, the rest of the air box. I think the carburetor's completely done. Oh, I gotta tighten up the rubber back um, where the carburetor gets air from. Right here is the um, rubber plenum that goes into the air box. That's not tight. Going into the engine is tight. I've got the petcock vacuum line on, the choke cable on, the idle adjustment cable swapped over. So I'm getting there. Oh, and I put in the two bolts for the fuel tank. Okay, she's put back together. Got oil back in her, new carb, air filter, oil temperature sensor, and I reconnected everything I could remember to reconnect. I'm gonna try and start her. So I tried everything, but it wouldn't start. And I think I left the line disconnected. And I know I thought about that line four times when I was putting this back together. And every time, I guess I thought I put it on, but I didn't. So I just stuck it on real quick, but I want to go ahead and take this tank back off and make sure that the line's on properly. I told Deb I needed another hour. She thought I was done. So did I, actually. 
I'm hoping this is it. I'm really excited because I've been scratching my my head for about 30 minutes why it won't start. I mean, it ran before I did all this work. All right, let's see if this thing will start. So she, uh, she sputtered a few times and then she went ahead and cranked up. She's idly now, I haven't hit the throttle yet. All right, folks, I think that's a wrap. Um, this is not a normal Piney Grove video, but uh, this is all part of uh, country living. Uh, just learning how to fix things by yourself. I have never done a carburetor on a Suzuki Iger 400 before. Um, I've never changed a carburetor on a motorcycle before, I don't think, but it can't be that hard, right? I'm not doing timing, I'm not doing valves, I'm not doing a new head. I'm simply taking off a carburetor and putting on a carburetor. It looks like the oil temperature light is off. Um, we'll just have to see as we use the bike more if uh, that's the fix for that. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like, please click subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care. So I got my new cowlings in the garage. I have to take these old cowlings off, slap the new cowlings on, put the tank cover on, and uh, the bottom undercarriage has a, a skid guard. So I got that over there. I'll put that on as well. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but this side, the bolts that were holding the cowling on were just totally rusted out. And I got the bolts out, but they can't go back in that spot, so I'll have to swap those bolts with another location. Go ahead and put the, put the tank cover on. Plastic has little hooks, and it hooks in, so that's in there.